in the previous lecture we looked at how to assemble all the back propagation building blocks on the whiteboard so we saw that there are three three classes which we will create one for the layers one for the relu activation and one for the softmax plus loss so we also looked at this diagram uh, which is the neural network architecture which we will be considering in the first layer we have three neurons with the relu activation in the second layer which is the output layer we have the three neurons with the softmax activation as the output and then we have the loss we have two inputs feeding into the first layer so uh, the problem is that problem is as follows we have a data set where every input consists of two attributes x1 and x2 and every input belongs to either of these three classes red green or blue our problem is to design a neural network and to optimize the weights and biases of the neural network so that whenever any new data point is given such as this or this the neural network correctly classifies that point as belonging to the red green or the blue class so we saw this in pictorial representation in the last lecture that we will be chaining the different gradients together so to find the partial derivative of the loss with respect to let's say the weights and biases in the first layer we we'll need to first find the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the input to the softmax multiplied by the partial derivative of the second layer output with the second layer input multiply it with the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the relu input and then multiply it with the partial derivatives of the neuron output first neuron output with respect to the weights and biases of the first layer only when we chain this 1 2 3 and 4 gradients together we will find the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weights and biases in the first layer uh, for finding the partial derivative of the loss with respect to weights and biases in the second layer we just have to chain two gradients together one and two so today the main purpose for us is actually to dive into python code and implement these three classes layers relu activation and softmax plus loss and we will run one full iteration of the forward and the backward pass in python so let's get started first what i want to do is introduce you to the data set itself so the data set consists of uh, 100 data points and uh, each data point belongs to either of the three classes red green or blue which i showed you on the whiteboard now let's move to creating the classes so the first class which we will be creating is the layer dense class and as i mentioned on the whiteboard the the layer dense class essentially has two method three methods the init method for initializing weights and biases the forward method which takes the dot product of inputs and weights and adds the bias and the backward method which essentially finds the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weights the bias and uh, input of that particular layer so in the init method as you can see we initialize the weights and biases the weights are initialized with a gaussian distribution and the biases are initialized all to zero based on the number of neurons remember here that this init method takes two arguments the inputs and the neurons so in the first layer of the neural network which we have just seen over here in the first layer the number of inputs are 2 and the number of neurons are 3 in the second layer the number of inputs are 3 and the number of neurons are 3 so this is the first uh, method the init method which initializes the weights and biases in the layer dense class there is also the forward method what this does is it finds the output of all the neurons in that layer which is just the dot product of the inputs and weights and then addition with the biases and then the third method which is the most important method is the backward pass it's also called as this method is defined as backwards and it takes as an input d values which is the gradient of the loss with respect to the output of that layer so for example if you want to find the partial derivative of the loss with respect to weights bias and inputs of this layer uh we have, would have already found out the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the outputs of this layer because those gradients are accumulated when we do when we are doing the backward pass and this method which is the dense one dot backward or the backward method in the layer class actually takes that as an input 
so the input will be partial derivative of the loss with respect to the la this layer output once we have that input we find the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weights with respect to the biases and with respect to the inputs of that layer and uh, we have already discussed the formula for this for the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weights it is the product of x transpose multiplied by dl dz for the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the bias we just sum the rows of dl dz and for the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the inputs it's dl dz multiplied with w transpose that's exactly what has been written over here so this is the backward method uh, in the layer dense class the second class which we have is the relu so it has two methods forward and backward method in the forward method we are actually taking the maximum of 0 comma x which is exactly what the relu function stands for and in the backward method we'll be taking the partial derivatives of the loss with respect to the relu input and to calculate this we will be given the partial derivative of the loss with respect to relu output so that is what this dl dz is that will be an input uh, to this particular method and then our aim is to find the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the relu inputs given the partial derivative of the loss with respect to relu output the way to do this is you just first assign the answer to be partial derivative of loss with respect to relu output and wherever the input z is less than zero you set those particular values in the matrix to zero uh, that's exactly what has been done here first we assign the output to d values which is dl dz that's partial derivative of loss with respect to relu output and wherever the inputs to the relu are less than or equal to zero we set those particular values in the output matrix to be equal to zero so that's the relu activation as i showed to you in the last lecture we won't be needing a separate class for the softmax and for the loss instead what we will be doing is we'll be defining a combined softmax activation and categorical cross entropy for the last layer and we'll define a forward and backward pass for this class so when you define this class the forward pass will actually uh, first calculate the uh, softmax based on the outputs of the last neuron so the forward pass will take as an input z1 z2 and z3 and find the softmax and then it will also actually find the categorical cross entropy loss so if you look at the code here first we are doing self dot activation dot output and self dot activation is activation softmax so if you go to the activation softmax class uh, let me show you how that looks like this is how the activation softmax class looks like what it will be doing is that it will be finding the softmax operation so e raised to x divided by sigma e raised to x and it will be doing that for each output for, for the final neuron and we will also be calculating the loss so the categorical cross entropy loss which has been defined here so loss categorical cross entropy so if you go to the loss categorical cross entropy class it's this class what we are essentially doing here is we are finding the negative log likelihood I have separate lectures on all of these uh, topics in this neural network for us from scratch series. So if you are finding this a bit fast, I highly encourage you to go back to those previous lectures and revise them. Okay, so that's essentially what we are doing in the forward pass. We are calculating first the soft max and then we are calculating the loss, the categorical cross entropy. And in the backward pass, uh, what we are essentially going to do is that... Uh, the reason we are combining the softmax and the loss is that the partial derivative of the loss with respect to softmax inputs actually has a very simple formula and that just predicted minus the ground truth values. So this is actually the partial derivative of the loss with respect to z1, z2 and z3. So to find the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the softmax inputs, what we actually do is just take the y true and then subtract the predicted or or basically do this uh, predicted minus ground truth so what we do is that we predict the ground truth or we subtract the ground truth from the predicted values and that's exactly actually what has been done here 
first you assign the output to the predicted values so first you say that the output is just the predicted values and then you subtract y true from it so this is the backward method in the activation softmax loss categorical cross entropy so it's a combined class of the softmax and the categorical cross entropy loss so now i have showed you in python how these three classes have been defined the first so let me minimize this a bit the first class is for the layers i showed you in python how this has been defined the second class is the relu activation i showed you in python how this has been defined and i showed you how the softmax plus loss class has been defined in python now we'll be combining all these classes together on this data set and applying one forward pass and one backward pass so first we'll be generating samples from this data set uh, i'm generating 100 samples uh, from this data set over here which is also called as the spiral data i'll then create the first layer which has two inputs and three neurons so to relate to this part of the code i strongly encourage you to keep this diagram in mind remember we have the first layer with three neurons relu activation then second layer with three neurons and softmax activation then the loss so what we'll be doing is first create the first layer with two neurons and uh, two inputs and three neurons then we create an instance of the relu activation then we create a second layer with three inputs and three neurons remember when we create an instance of a layer it automatically assigns weights and biases to it weights from a gaussian and biases will be zero then we start implementing the forward pass first we will do dense one dot forward which will create the outputs of the first layer these outputs will go through the first activation which is the relu these outputs of the relu will go to the second layer uh, and then the outputs of the second layer will actually go through the loss activation dot forward so loss activation is the softmax plus the categorical loss and ent cross entropy combined class which we saw so this loss equal to loss activation dot forward so then it will calculate the loss so we can already print the loss activation dot output for the first five samples and we can also print the loss value so if you see the loss output for the or the actual values for the first five samples it looks like this and the loss and the accuracy for the first five samples actually looks like this then we will be implementing the backward pass so uh, we'll be implementing the backward pass right from here so what's happening over here is just we are looking at the accuracy calculation uh, and that's just simple we just see the output and uh, see whether the highest probability belongs to the correct class but the real interesting thing is the backward pass so we are going to chain multiple operations together so remember what we are doing in that part of the code is that first we are finding the loss activation dot backward we are calling loss activation dot backward what this will do is find the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the softmax input then we are finding dense two dot backward what this will do is find the partial derivative of the loss with respect to layer two inputs then we are calling relu dot backward this will find partial derivative of loss with respect to the relu input and then we are calling dense one dot backward this will find the partial derivative of loss with respect to all weights and biases in the first layer dense two dot backward will find the partial derivative of the loss with respect to all weights and biases in the second layer great now uh, let's see how this is done so loss activation dot backward loss activation dot output comma y so then we are doing the first a backward pass which will give the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the softmax input then we are doing dense two dot backward and remember the input to this is basically the partial derivative of loss with respect to the softmax inputs so partial derivative of loss with respect to z1 z2 and z3 is the input to dense two dot backward uh, okay now when we find dense two dot backward what this will actually give me is partial derivative of the loss with respect to the layer two inputs so when we run dense two dot backward it will give me the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the layer two inputs and remember these inputs are essentially the outputs of the relu so then when we find the relu dot backward 
the dense two dot backward outputs will serve as an input to the relu dot backward so the third uh, method which we are chaining here is activation one dot backward dense two dot inputs so these are the inputs of the second layer so partial derivative of the loss with respect to the inputs of the second layer and then when we run this this will actually give me the partial derivative of the loss with respect to relu inputs and then finally i will run dense one dot backward and the input to this will be the partial derivative of the loss with respect to relu inputs so when i come to the first layer the input will be the partial derivative of the loss with respect to relu input and then i will get the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weights and biases of the first layer so that's it we have we have now finished the entire part of the code where we have chained different things in the backward pass and then finally throughout this process remember when we do dense two dot backward this process will give us the partial derivative of the second layer or the loss or the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weights and biases in the second layer when we call dense one dot backward it will give us the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weights and biases in the first layer and we just then print those things so we first print dense one dot d weights and d biases which is the partial derivatives with respect to weights and biases in the first layer so remember the first layer has essentially uh, every neuron has two weights so it has six weights and three biases so its derivatives will have similar structure so if you look at the output this is uh, two rows and three columns so six weights and these are the partial derivatives of the loss with respect to the weights of the first layer we have three biases this gives me the partial derivatives of the loss with respect to the bias of each neuron in the first layer similarly for the second layer there are three neurons and each neuron has three weights so that's why this is a 3 by 3 matrix which represents the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weights in the second layer uh, and this matrix or this vector rather is the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the biases in the second layer and each neuron will have one bias so that's why it has three entries so this is how we have printed the partial derivative of the loss with respect to weights and biases in the first layer and partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weights and biases of the second layer that's it now this entire thing is done now what we'll just need to do is that we need to chain gradient descent or we need to add gradient descent now we are able to iterate through the neural network and find a forward pass and do the backward pass so we are able to get the partial derivatives of the loss with respect to all the weights and biases in the neural network now all we need to do is just think of an update rule for how to we use these partial derivatives to update my weights and biases and do the number of iterations which we will be seeing in gradient descent so as you can see in just i would say 15 to 20 lines of code we have written the entire forward and backward pass for uh, for this neural network on the spiral data set and even if we have a huge neural network we have divided it into these three classes right we have divided it into the uh, layers the relu activation and the softmax so we have divided it into three classes the layers the relu activation and the softmax plus loss class the advantage of having such classes is that no matter how large the neural network gets our code will always remain quite short so this is how you can implement the entire forward and backward pass in python this actually brings us to the end of the back back propagation section of this neural networks from scratch series in the next in the next lecture we'll start looking at optimizers we'll start looking at gradient descent stochastic gradient descent adam optimizer etc as you can see i am showing everything from scratch without assuming anything i hope you are following up till this point i'll be sharing all the code files with everyone thank you so much everyone and i look forward to seeing you in the next lecture